so good morning students today we will talk about the as in yesterday's class we had talked about the uh, polyploidy polyploidy and mutation breeding okay first we had before that we had talked about the discussed the conventional breeding for disease resistance then one more method i had uh, explained you that is the mutation breeding for disease resistance except that i had explained you the polyploidy okay so next term uh, the next topic in this chapter that is the plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pest what it is plant breeding for for developer developing developing this is resistance to developing resistance to resistance to plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pest okay this is the next topic in this chapter what it is means sir by using plant breeding technique how they are going to develop the plants uh, for resistance to insect pest because uh, for the crop field uh, many insects many pest okay many insects like uh, some insects will be there which are responsible for destroying the crop fields or the crop so to uh, the plant should be resistant to that particular insect if insects are going to come and uh, destroying any part of the plant means the plant should not uh, access to that particular insect they should uh, resist them so how they are going to develop what are the examples uh, let's see here first of all the major cause for the uh, uh, large scale destruction what it is major cause for for large scale destruction that is the insect factor what it is large scale destruction of crop plants crop plants of crop fields okay whatever the crop produced not only the crop field but also whatever the products they are producing for them also see if for in the fields and all if for they are cropping or they are cultivating the crops if insects are going to destroy them means sir uh, it will cause a major loss to them okay except that after cultivation also they will take that particular grains or whatever the jowar bajra wheat and all uh, they will store them in the whatever the gunny bags and all okay after that also small small insects are going to making the uh, particular um, food products uh, uh, or destroying them or damaging them okay so that is also one type of loss for the crop production okay so what is that major cause for the large scale and that too you cannot see one or two insects in the particular field or in the uh, whatever the products you had produced by the after cultivation so it will be in a large number which are going to destroy in a very large scale okay so what it is means so that is by the insect and pest infestation infestation insect or and a pest infestation okay they are boring them they are making holes in the grains or whatever the cereals pulses and all and they are making the particular grains which is not fit for the eat okay not fit to consume or not fit to eat so like that they are making which way which will cause a major distraction for what to whom to the farmer sir so whatever the insect resistance in the host to crop plants insect resistance to crop plants what are that means why it is going to take place there are three reasons there are three 
characteristics by which uh, this insects or pests are going to attracted or they are going to make a uh, what's called make a uh, loss so what is that uh, insect resistance in the particular host to crop plant what is going to take place means uh, it is due to the whatever the resistance uh, in the host to crop plant uh, that is due to the due to the three characters are there okay that is morphological biochemical and one more that is physiological okay morphological biochemical and physiological characteristics okay listen here the particular crop plant if that crop plant is insect resistance why when, when it is going to become an insect resistance means uh, when there is a change in their biochemical see first of all morphological morphological means uh, that is uh, according to their size shape whatever okay that is one thing biochemical there is a change in the chemical constituent of the plant the third thing that is the physiological whatever the functions which is taking place inside the plant body that is also going to occur uh, that is also one of the character or one of the reason for what insect pest resistance so say, let's see some of the examples over here what are the examples in the that is a there i left me first example that is the hairy leaf in several plants hairy leaf in the hairy leaves in several plants which is associated with plants which is is associated with the resistance to resistance to insect which is associated with resistance to what insect so here one example is there that is the resistance to jasite jasite is one of the name of insect okay just like in the size in cotton plants this is one example the size is an enemy of insect which is resistant in which plant that is in the cotton plant it mostly affects or it mostly destroy or damaging which plant which crop plant that is the cotton plant so it becomes resistant sir, to what go to a specific insect huh? what is the name of that insect that is the jasite one more is there cereal leaf beetle cereal leaf beetle cereal leaf beetle in cereal leaf beetle in beetle here also you see 
the name of the insect or the pest is the cereal leaf beetle okay beetles you know some insects will be there to which we will call it as the beetles okay so that is specific to whom to which are majorly causing a uh, loss or damaging what cereals cereals means that is the whatever the jowar wheat bajra maize so these all these come under the cereals they are damaging to the leaf so what is this the name of that beetle that is given as the cereal leaf beetle what wheat these wheat plants are resistant to which insect that is the cereal leaf beetle the next uh, in wheat one more is there you see in wheat plants in a wheat plants you see there is a presence of solid stems of the wheat plants with the solid stems whatever the wheat plant which has the solid stems which will lead to non preference okay which will lead to non preference to non preference to stems of fly this is also one name of insect stem saw fly here this type of insects are not responsible or they are not going to destroy the wheat which is having a solid stems okay or thick stems in the wheat plant if the stem is thicker then this flies or stems of fly they will not destroy it okay they are not going to destroy it if the stems are thin then they will cause the what or see what i am saying uh, some of the morphological characters such as uh, here they are telling that is the thickness of the stem here the thickness of the stem it is a uh, one of the morphological structure which is making our resistance to insects by uh, thickening or whatever the thickness of the stem is there which will not make the particular stems of fly not to attack to that particular plant if the stem is thinner then uh, that particular stems of fly which are going to destroy the stems of the wheat okay so here this resistance to insect is mainly based on what morphological biochemical so this is a point to explain the morphological structure or morphological character in the what in the plant which is resistant to insects insect pest then one more is there smooth leaf and nectarless cotton this is also comes under the physiological character that is the smooth leaf and nectarless cotton the leaves will be smooth and uh, the cotton whatever the flowers will be there for the producing the co cotton that flower should not have the uh, they don't have any nectar okay so that's why they are they will not attract see leaf and nectarless cotton do not attract do not attract bulbworms this is specifically meant for the damaging what bulbworms are specifically meant for damaging the cotton plants so if the cotton plants have a smooth leaves the leaves are smooth and whatever flowers will be there that flowers will not have any nectar nectar is absent or this flower is nectarless okay the flowers are going to secrete one of the sweet substance okay so that nectar is absent if it is absent in the flower and the leaves are very smooth then we can say that particular bulbworms will not attract that particular plants if the leaves are not smooth if the flowers are nectar 
or they are going to produce the nectar then the bull worms are going to damage the particular cotton fields okay see some examples over here that is first is hairy leaves in the several plants whatever the leaves on the leaves there is a presence of certain hair like structures like this okay small small hairs you can see so that hairy leaves in the several plant which is associated with what insect pest so the next one example that it give an insect uh, resistance to jacites in what cotton plants this is one uh, insect and one more that is the bulbworm in the cotton plant here it is to jacites in cotton plant and here one more physiological structure or physiological character is responsible for what for resistance to what bulbworms and the cereal leaf beetle this is also which is not attracting the weed this in the weed plant the morphological character that is the solid stems will do not uh, uh, lead to the preference to stem soft like so this is about some of the examples of what insect resistance in water in the crop, uh, crop plants the next we will see about the some of the other see i had told you morphological physiological and one more that is the biochemical let's see the resistance to plant according to the biochemical character what it is let's see here one more that is according to the biochemical character that is high aspartic acid high aspartic acid low nitrogen content and one more that is the low sugar content here high aspartic acid low nitrogen content and one more that is the low sugar content in which plant they are telling in sir that is in the maize plant if for these are what aspartic acid nitrogen sugar they all are what chemicals they are the see here these all are what bio chemicals so this biochemical which is one of the characteristic feature for what for the insect pest resistance so here this high aspartic acid low nitrogen content low sugar content in the maize it will lead to the resistance to one of the insect that is known as the maize stem borer see here in the maize plant if these biochemical changes are going to occur these maize plant are not going to affected by what by the maize stem borer what it is it leads to it leads to resistance to maize stem borer what is the name of that insect here the insect name is a uh, insect or pest here that insect name is maize stem borer why the name they had given as the maize stem borer means uh, because that will affect uh, to the stems of the maize plant uh. so in the maize plant if these uh, chemicals are high first is the uh, if there is an high content of aspartic acid low content of nitrogen low content of sugar then that particular stem borers will not affect to the 
maize plant. This is one thing, and whatever the breeding methods uh, for this insect pest resistance, uh, this is also identical or similar to the plant breeding for what? For high yield or the disease resistance. Uh, whatever the evolution, germ plasm collection, selection of the parents, hybridization, then evolution, then testing and releasing as they are for the commercial production. So all these steps only applicable for what are impl implemented for what for the plant resistance breeding for the plant resistance uh, are de breeding and developing for what resistance to insect or pest. So some of the examples they had given over here uh, for these um, and new varieties they had developed after a uh, breeding for what resistance to plant insect uh, insects pest resistance. Let's see. Whatever I have explained, that is high aspartic acid, low nitrogen content, and low sugar content, which is uh, affecting to the, uh, which uh, causes a resistance to maize temporis in the maize plant. This will ask for one more question. One or two mark question. This is very important question. Okay. Next, uh, some hybrid crop varieties for insect pest resistance. Some hybrid crop varieties. Crop variety for insect pest. Okay, see here, first row, that is the crop. Okay, the next row, that is the variety. Then, last one, that is the insect pest. So in this one, uh, first is the brassica, which is a mustard, mustard plant. Okay, first uh, that is the brassica. Brassica is the mustard name of the mustard. Uh, here, this brassica plant, after breeding, they got a new variety or a hybrid. What is the name of the hybrid they had given as? They had given as the Pusa Galra. What they had given? They had given as the Pusa Gaura. Okay, and what a insect pest, which is a uh, see Pusa Gaura is a new variety in what in the brassica or the mustard plant. So the, to which uh, insect they become resistant user, uh, that is the aphids. Okay, aphids. Uh, the next uh, second one, flat bean. Which is one type of bean, flat bean, and they developed uh, new varieties or new hybrid. Uh, two varieties that have developed Pusa Sem2. And one more that is Pusa Sem3. These two varieties that have developed, and what is that particular insect, sir? Uh, Means uh, which become resistance to this particular plant, uh, just like a pipe stand. Just a pipe and fruit borers. These are the names of the insects. The next one, that is the okra. Okra means that is the bindi. Next crop plant, okra. That is the pindi. In the pindi, which variety they develop the insect? That is the Pusa Swani. Pusa Savani. And the more, that is the Pusa A4. They, this also developed into two varieties. One is the Pusa Savani, and one more is the 
puts a a4 and a which insect to which insect it becomes resistant means a shoot and wood work and okay so these are the some of the examples for what for the after breeding they got some of the new varieties are uh, resistant to that certain insect first one that is the brassica mustard plant in mustard plant which variety that are developed after hybridization are the hybrid name variety are hybrid what is the name of that hybrid is a gara and to which insect specifically to which insect it is resistant that is to be a fight sir the next here plant beans usa sem2 usa sem3 then which are the insect that is the jacites aphids and stem borax and here okra or bhindi usa savani usa a4 and that is the shoot and root borax okay next up this is about what about the plant breeding for developing resistance to insect pest next we will see about the next topic plant breeding for improved quality improved food quality let's see Yeah, plant breeding for improved food quality. See here, what they are saying in this particular topic, please, sir. Here in this topic, uh, see there is an in the world, there is around uh, all over the world. How many? How much is the population? Number of population. Number of population means so that is around uh, more than more than eight. Eight hundred and forty million is the number of population all over the world. Okay, this is the number of population all over the world. Okay, so to meet the nutritive value of the food. is not sufficient for this much of population okay so the daily requirement uh, it's a uh, not sufficient for this much of population so more than 3 billion people how many more than 3 billion people are suffering from deficiency of nutrients uh, okay see what i am saying around this much of the population whatever the food production is there in that particular food uh, food means what that is the carbohydrates what are the nutrients sir, which are present in the food means sir, see in the food means that is that comes the cereals pulses grains sir, then meat beef or chicken dairy products and all everything will come under this food what the all the population are going to consume so in the food what are the nutrients sir? we are talking about their nutritive value here they had given improve food quality how to improve the food quality quality means what okay whether they are going to attract that food to take and uh, consume it no the quality means that is the nutritive quality what is that quality that is the nutritive quality of the food okay nutritive quality means that is the presence of more amount or more quantity of nutrients in the food okay 
See the food which contains the carbohydrates, proteins, fats, vitamins, minerals, etc. So all these are what? These all are the nutrients. What are all? Uh, what all are these? These all are what? Nutrients. So whatever we uh, see, this carbohydrate, protein, fat, these all will come under the. These nutrients are also divided into two types. If uh, in the food the nutrients should be in a large quantity, sir, then it is known as the macronutrient. And if it is required in a less quantity, means sir, uh, then it is known as the micro nutrient. So here the examples or whatever the macro nutrients, what are the micro nutrients, means sir, uh, that is the carbohydrate, proteins, and fats. What is what are these micro nutrients means which is required in a low quantity or low amount? Uh, that is the micro nutrients. So, which is required in the food in a very low quantity, sir, that comes the vitamins, minerals, salts, ions. So, all these things will come under the micronutrients. So, what is the thing, means, sir? Whatever they eat around uh, this much of people, whatever the food they are getting, that is, that food does not have a particular improved nutritive quality. They are not getting a sufficient nutrients. Sir what their bodies required. Around 3 billion number of people or population is suffering from their deficiency. If these macronutrients or micronutrients will become lower in amount, how much our body is required, if it is not getting it means sir, then our body leads to the deficiency, which will lead to the some of the syndrome or diseases. Diseases will are going to cause then accept that which will reduce the lifespan, reduce the lifespan, and more and more there is a deficiency in the there will be that is going to occur. Okay, so here they cannot afford to buy see in the world many people are many people or the population are not getting enough quantity of nutrients. Why? Because they don't have much, their condition, their financial condition is not so good, they cannot buy. For example, one example I will tell you that uh, whatever the rich people will be there, they will buy a daily apples. Okay, the apple which contains certain minerals, certain uh, whatever the nutrients which is required for our body. That's why we are telling that uh, an apple a day, doctors keep away. Okay, so why? Because which is apple which is having a high nutritive value that's why they are going to consume it daily so the people who is afford who can afford to their families or to within uh, themselves uh, they can take and they will buy and eat what about the poor people who can, can't uh, afford to take the apples daily or uh, for their food they cannot buy it see many people are suffering from that particular deficiency of nutrients and the population which are suffering from the deficiency of that nutrient, that particular people of the population are known as the malnutrition. Or they are known as malnutrition. They are not getting a sufficient nutrient, nutrients. That, is, that means a deficiency of nutrients. That is known as the, what it is known as? It is known as the malnourished or malnutrition people. Okay. So, whatever the diet which are lacking the micronutrients as well as the micronutrients uh, such as amino acid, uh, iron, zinc, uh, potassium, sodium, iodine in the food uh, which are going to reduce the lifespan as well as uh, which will reduce the, uh, uh, they will be suffering from mental illness. Mental illness, they will cause, there will be certain diseases are going to cause. For example, if there is a deficiency of iron, okay, if there is a deficiency of iron, then that person will lead to the anemia. 
that is also one of the disease or syndromes are going to cause that reduces the life span and the which may lead to the also one of the important uh, uh, deficiency which leads to the better qualities in the food okay so whatever the vegetables crops grains food crops will be there that is going to they are plant they are improving what the quality of that particular food so here uh, first we will talk about the amino acids okay which are the building blocks of protein proteins are very much required for the children especially for the children so among the 21 amino acids are there among that eight amino acids are very essential for the body of the human beings so which is providing in the provided by the plant breeding technique from uh, by this technique they are providing that amino acids in the fruits grains cereals or pulses so whatever the what are that particular um, uh, increasing they are increasing the food quality or increasing the micronutrients in the food uh, that they had given one term the term for that is uh, that is the bio fortification let's see here this is very important question for two marks what do you what is meant by let's see what is meant by bio fortification this is very important question for two marks bio fortification please if possible note it down bio fortification means a plant breeding designed to increase the yield increase the levels of levels of vitamins especially the micronutrients they are concerned with what they are concerned with micronutrients not with the macronutrients so increase the levels of vitamins minerals and higher proteins higher proteins then and healthier fats healthier fats in crop yields in crop yields it is called as the it is called as the bio fortification what it is called as it is called as the bio fortification here you see what do you mean by bio fortification means sir that is the plant breeding designed to for what they have designed here that is to increase the levels of vitamins minerals higher proteins healthier fats and yields in the crop yields and it is called the bio fortification so in the year 2000 in which year that is in the year 2000 what happens means sir here there are several crop varieties which is developed with higher food value what is that means sir here some examples are there that is a See, whatever the breeding is there for improve the food, nutritional qualities undertaken. What are the objectives for improving this? Sir, uh, that is uh, here. I will write. Uh, what are that? Uh, 
breeding for improved nutritional quality in the undertaker. What are their objectives here, sir, to improve the food qualities? Objectives for that, but first is protein content and quality. Protein content and quality. One more is there, that is oil content and quality. Oil content and quality. One more, that is the vitamin content. And the last one, that is the micronutrient and mineral content. Micronutrient and mineral content. So these all are what? These all are the objectives for improving the food quality. First, that is the protein content and quality, oil content and quality, vitamin content, and last one is the micronutrient and mineral content. So let's see some other forms of oil fortification or for improving the quality of food. Some examples you will see here. That is in the year 12, sorry, 2000, they had improved the food quality. And how they had improved the mixer, in what way? In the year 2000, that is the maize hybrid, sir. Whatever they had developed, that is the maize hybrid, sir. After hybridization, whatever the hybrid they got in the maize, so what they had did for improving the food quality means they had that had twice the amount of this maize hybrid, which is developed in the year 2000. They had they had twice the amount of twice the amount of amino acids. And especially which amino acid specifically, which amino acid means sir, that is the lysine and amino acid means sir, which amino acid? Lysine and tryptophan. In this way, they have developed by whatever the amount, normal amount of the amino acids will be there in the maze, they have developed by hybridization of technique and they made the amount of amino acid double. Okay. One more example is there. That is the wheat variety. Wheat variety. In this wheat variety, a new variety they had developed. The, the name of that new variety in the wheat Atlas 66. What it is? That is the Atlas 66, which has a high protein content. This is having an, a high protein content. This variety also developed for what? Improving the cultivated wheat. Okay. So, rice also, they had developed four times whatever the content, the iron fortified rice variety they had developed. Iron fortified rice variety they had developed, and whatever the iron content is there, that is four more than four times. In this manner, they had developed the food quality. Okay, so this is about what bio fortification next we will see about the next topic that is the single cell protein so what do you mean by single cell protein that all things sir. before going to that i will i want to tell you that what research institute i a r i i a r i that is the indian agricultural research institute indian Agriculture Research Institute it has been developed many examples for, for improved the food quality. What are that sir? That are the uh, vitamin A enriched carrots, spinach, pumpkin, vitamin C enriched 
bitter gourd, batua, mustard, tomato, iron and calcium enriched Spanish and batua, protein enriched beans, uh, broad laba, French and garden peas. So this is all about the uh, biofortification, which is one of the very important question. So next we will discuss about the next topic that is the single cell protein. Okay, thank you.